Welcome to the third match of the first week of the 29th Grand Arena season. Wow, that was a mouthful. And I'm playing against Seraph the Mad from Incall Lead, who used to be in the old um, Grand Arena format, uh, a Kyber champion. And so it was a very interesting match and I was very much looking forward to it. And as you can see, I had quite a heavy defense in front of me. 5GLs plus Starkiller and Craig Onge and Omicron. Um, so I had a plan a little bit ahead and one thing that was clear to me quite quite early is that I couldn't use Starkiller on Ray, Not because she was souped uh, with a Datacron, but because um, I wouldn't have had anything for C. Um, I wanted to use my own C on JML and I wanted to use other stuff for other stuff. And I couldn't <laughs> and I couldn't use um, more because that was mag and the risk of um, getting feared is too high. So I said, okay, I potentially should use Star Killer on C. And so I had essentially just one option um, to use against Ray, which was gas, as you can see here. And it's a dicey battle, of course, um, but it would have been dicier if there was. Um, hero Poe as well, but so it was like three tanks, including JTR um, and Ray and Finn, and so I felt, okay, as long as I can spread out the damage and make sure that I don't get whirlwinded when gas is sitting or time the whirlwinds um, and the damage output so well or spread it so well that I only get whirlwinded when gas is standing up and only get the ultimate when he's standing, I should be fine. Um, and yeah, I sped up the battle a little bit, um, just, you know, just because, and got my first Rex Secured ready, so I took out uh, Holo because she's a little bit annoying, um, and then it was 5 or 3 versus um, 5, because I took out Silver here, and now I was a little bit like tricky, I had to, have to watch the damage output, um, so try to, you know, go around, luckily could get some turn better here from, from Rex, which is uh, usually you want to like save that move for the times when, when gas is sitting, so you get more turns for yourself, so he stands up and can sit down again because he um, got a whirlwind. Um, but now there's some bonus protection, the health bars are okay, so I felt quite comfortable going um, out on Ray or potentially um, Finn would have been nice as well here, or good as well. Then Ray got in the ultimate, so I was okay. Uh, potentially I have to sit down again after that, or maybe not, we will see. Um, just wait, basically trying to, you know, take a time. Um, and Gas was still standing, so I could go all on Ray, I took her out, and so that was quite a simple match. Got Rex executed again, took out JTR, and then, yeah got not the best banners but it was a one shot which was my goal because um, I knew that my opponent would be would have the options to go for my defense even though he was uh, heavily committing on his own defense but um, from a player with this caliber um, you would just have to expect that they are capable of doing the full clear um, even though they basically have the same ratio of um, off meta they have to go through. Um, yeah, so then I took in EP Starkiller versus C. Um, was a bit weird. Um, I, it's been a long time since I played that. Last time I played it, I think it was when Starkiller just came as just came out, and so it it was more like this, you know, like a honeymoon phase. <laughs> it still kind of is with, with Starkiller because. Um, it still feels good, but back then I had a different morning for him. He was faster, um, but didn't have that much damage output. Uh, but in this battle, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, you want the damage output, of course. But Malak can make things a bit complicated. As you can see, um, uh, my EP is feared, Barris is feared, so um, it's always a bit like annoying. Um, but so you want to take him out. But at the same time, you also want to take out Talon before you take out... Um, C, uh, which happened here, which was good, but then again, of course, with each kill you get, um, I didn't want to use kill all of them in an AoE, uh, because otherwise they would just like be at full health and full protection again, 
And so I couldn't avoid uh, that he got into his own ultimate and he sniped out my tank and Mara, but I still had EP, which was good for assists and I also got to my own ultimate. Of course, um, only could back temporarily to my full health and protection and didn't even take out um, Malak, but um, yeah, overall that was okay. I knew it would be very dicey from this point in time to get the full clear. I would need a lot of like, damage output, but uh, because there is deceived on Starkiller, he doesn't quit anymore. So it's even though he has a very high offense on my Starkiller, um, it doesn't really do much. So I was like, okay, this potentially will be a two shot. Um, yeah, and so at this point in time, it was clear it will be a two shot. But um, a solo C is, is manageable. You can take several things for that. Um, then the next battle versus this um, Starkiller. Uh, again, the team was a bit souped with Datacron, and I wasn't really sure um, if this would work again, because in the last matchup it worked. Um, GG, Newt, but here in this um, Datacron there was like a lot of tenacity included, so it was kind of kind of tough to land target locks. And there was also Shark on B2, as you can see here, which of course makes it hard for him to get into the way and cleanse all the buffs, uh, or like dispel the buffs. And, um, you know, uh, eventually I got target locks, um, but it was kind of too late. And there's still damage immunity on GK, um, and I was forced to hit him. So, of course, you still can uh, get up a little bit of the health, the max health from, from GG, but it doesn't do much because, um, yeah. You don't do damage to GK. My only hope was that um, I can get a, um, a some certain amount, like or like, what's the, the English term? Lining up some um, some AOEs so to potentially take out Reasers here. AOEs because they take out the other characters, but as you can see, they focus down on GG after B1 was out, and so it, it's kind of game over. And that was unfortunate, but I had a hunch that it might be a fail. I want to try it anyway. And then I, as a cleanup, I went in with the team, which I want to use like initially, which was my first fought uh, versus this team. And it was just like uh, Qui-Gon Jin. I was just waiting for them to, to kill Qui-Gon um, and then kill the whole team with Anakin, essentially. But it takes some time for them to figure out that they have to kill Qui-Gon Jin first. And then I took out the team, but of course GK. Uh, still wasn't damage immunity, so I had to wait for him uh, or for the dispel. That that's why Plo was here as well because it's basic dispels, and so um, yeah, clean up the team. That was nice, and then there was the last team um, in the front wall, bottom front. That was Jamel, and here I basically just took uh, my own C. Didn't want to yeah fool around with this team. For a short amount of time, I was debating with myself if I, if I could use um, Buff Revan versus this team. I have, haven't played it in Grand Arena yet, and so I felt like, yeah, it's an option, but maybe try to not take too many losses and, you know, um, just go for the win, essentially. It's it's nice to play around with this, but I think um, it's... it's uh, too dicey potentially and then you you already use what for instance um, I also could have used new with new to the R but then uh, Newt was already gone so I would have used what and then I wouldn't have had what for C so I uh, yeah just made the log logical choice to just go for C initial uh, alarm like that way and my C is still R8 um, I don't know for me it's kind of feels like the leftover GL that no one talks about and it's like a lot of people go for him as the first year because he's quite easy to obtain, but at the same time, uh, he feels a bit like lost uh, recently. Uh, but this is also just a gut feeling because the other ones might be a little bit flashier. Um, and yeah, anyway, he's still a great. He's still great against uh, Jedi, uh, but I guess yeah, it's maybe time to, to bring him up to Relic Nine at some point because he just feels a bit weaker. Anyway, got 56, which was expected, uh, but yeah, was okay. Uh, so I left C for later. And then I went to the north wall, and there, again, a soup team with, um, I think we had a cooldown increased data cron here, and also some higher health steal. 
Um, but I felt like I think this will still work uh, with my with Bounty Hunters, uh, Fennec and Bam, and so I tried it. Um, here I made um, I made a minor mistake, which will happen soon. Here I managed uh, I meant to do the basic here on Maul to take him out, but I actually accidentally did the special. Uh, sorry for all the hiccups in my speaking. <laughs> um, and so I just landed armor shred on him, but yeah, that was unfortunate. Uh, it would have been taken out because uh, my Fennec is quite strong. Uh, she's R8, not R9, but usually that, that's enough to take out a thing, uh, the more. Anyway, took him out eventually, and so it was just Lord Vader and um, Kandarus. Kandarus really isn't a problem. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my Mendo, like OG Mendo, but um, Bam was still there, which is more important for the rest of this matchup. Um, as you can see here, putting out damage immunity on Fennec, she needs to stay alive. Ideally, all of them have to stay alive, but uh, she's the main damage dealer, so whenever you can, uh, cleanse all the, the buffs, uh, the debuffs, um, keep taunt on Bosk. You can land armor shred here, um, but even though it was an R9 with higher health steal, uh, R9 Lord Vader, I kind of felt like, ah, uh, I think basics are more important in this instance, even though I hear I lost BAM, so maybe one armor shred could have been enough. Um, but yeah, was okay. Again, cleansing, mass assist, uh, and then one more basic and the fight is over. It was a little bit dicey, of, uh, of course, but because a uh, lot later was suit, but it um, was okay. Um, was a one shot, and I was quite happy with this sort of the outcome. So then, uh, versus this JML, which had again, uh, maybe the term is a bit weird, suit, but uh, oh, it's just like the boys is in my head right now. Um, had quite an interesting combination of uh, of leveling for for the data cron, including this like five percent offense increase for the uh, for the team when they are buffs on them or like that buffs that can be dispelled and yeah, JMK's nature is like spreading buffs like wildfire, so um, it was like kind of interesting battle. Um, I myself had also data cron, which granted more like uh, defense capabilities, um, so health regen and protection regen and stuff like that but nothing flashy so i uh, i still felt comfortable uh because jmk usually is yeah i wouldn't say he's immune to those to those effects but they don't play that much of a role in the mirrors and because there was um what's his face mace i also didn't take in bounty hunters which also potentially would have had a hard time uh, and so, because I need bounty hunters anyway for something else, I felt comfortable um, with the mirror here. And Mace, of course, if he's the only tank, makes it easier because you can uh, dispel the taunt and then you can go for cat right away, which I did, as you have seen, and then it's quite an easy battle, to be honest. Of course, I lost my tank, um, which, yeah, was unfortunate, but anyway, um, for me, it was most important because at this point in time, my opponent already failed at the bottom front quite a bit. Um, he, he eventually kind of got through it, of course, uh, but for me, it was more important to not fail and just like have finish, finish with one shots. Then the next team, which is a little bit like a tricky team as well, because there was this low gear character. Um, I forgot her name, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, the healer, which just died, you know her name, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but Bad Batch still does a great job. Is it Amidala? I don't know. Anyway, gosh, don't tell anyone I'm playing this game for some years now. I've written all the names of the characters. Um, and Wampa, I, I was debating myself how to clean up C, and I was. I wanted initially to use Wampa versus the item team, but she is again. Delacron with uh, added to, uh, potency, uh, which was quite high, and so I didn't have Delacron laying around for myself with tenacity or so. Uh, oh, I only had one Delacron for the offense, which was the one from JMK. <laughs> so, um, and so I, I said, okay, I just use Wampa versus C because his Omicron is kind of made for these situations when it's one versus one. 
anyway and um, um, I still had the R, like the R without Malak, it's still a good team and so I thought they should be capable of taking out Aiden. Um, yeah, just goal here was going through and going to the back wall. Um, another option would have been wall, to be honest here, but um, I felt felt okay with one, but I wanted to see it anyway because it's the first time I'm trying this, so oh, I have the opportunity to do this, so it was nice. Um, took him out, and this is the back wall. Still tricky teams, like there's an S with the the re resistance res, uh, mashup and some droids um, and first order team without the Omicron. Would have been more interesting if there was the Omicron on, on TIE Fighter Pilot, but anyway. So first I went back to the north um, to clear the north and went for Iron with the R, which pretty much is, is a straightforward battle. Um, wouldn't call it a hard counter because they are not really out there these days anymore. Um, but it's yeah, as soon as Deathmark landed on on Iron, it's going to for them. Um, and so, pretty much an easy battle. But um, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Sixty-two banners still have some banners, of course. But um, yeah, that's the nature. Then versus the droids, I used my Jedi team, which I still had left over this time with the right lead. Uh, prefer, prefer Basti for this team, just for the TM boost. Then taking out the droids one by one. Uh, Sordi isn't relic in this case, so it um, makes things easier, I'd say, uh, because she herself is, is very beefy as well. Um, so other than that, it just feels like Golden versus the, 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 the Nuke team, the uh, GG Nuke, just a little bit different. Um, and as you can see here, um, JKL is doing the main damage and it's kind of nice to see such dam uh, mad damage output again uh, these days, even though, um, as you can, <laughs> yeah, given these uh, two 12 characters like T3 and I think uh, Sordi was below that, G11, G9, whatever, um, it kind of it's funny to see such numbers again. Um, yeah, <laughs> so. Kind of flashback to the old days of Swigger. Of Swigger. Um, then versus the um, resistance, uh, I knew it was dicey because Nest usually times uh, it, there's a higher timeout risk with uh, more versus Nest. Uh, but my idea was maybe I can get to Nest uh, after more got like you know um, enough damage stacked but of course that didn't happen because the other characters fell too quickly and so there was this thought yeah that doesn't really matter but Ness will take a turn all the bone protection will fall off of her and either um, a basic from Maul can be enough or maybe uh, the rocket from Django would be enough or maybe the basics from Django could be enough to take her out anyway so uh, even though it was dicey um, I didn't feel too worried about the outcome. Then we have healing immunity, which is nice as well. And so at this point in time, I was like, okay, I guess this is doable. You only have to time it right. Um, and then it should be, should be worth it. Of course, take some time. Uh, that's still as a menace, trying to do some max health as well. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, you look at this now, she's in the yellow, I think, okay, next time she's coming out of, um, no, she's back in green, <laughs> helps you, but uh, should be okay. And then she was ready and uh, the reduction of max health kind of helped and so I had like 63 banners. And then the last matchup was a little bit of overkill, uh, troopers versus this first order, but um, yeah, I mean, you do what you gotta do, right? And um, my opponent, which had a little bit like after the match, he was telling me um, that he kind of overcommitted on defense uh, because he had a spoiler alert, like he couldn't clear my back zone. So, um, which was unfortunate for him, of course, but at the same time, uh, yeah, rough defense uh, and potentially didn't expect that I get through, uh, which was the game plan, I guess that was the game plan. Um, that I don't get through and then they at least full clear the top and the ships and stuff like that or maybe the, uh, if get a full clear themselves and so um, yeah so that didn't happen 
my back wall health and so um I got the win and I can spoil this because I don't have the I don't have the final results. I forgot to record them, I only record my battles. Um, but I won the match, which was uh, nice because usually I kind of like to start with two wins in a row in the new season. It gives me the kind of not confidence, but it gives me the ease of mind because my game plan is like winning just for, for funsies nowadays because the other grounds can mess you up anyway. Um, sometimes you have very good ones or your opponents are very good ones and you don't, so this can turn the tide in the match, of course. And the other thing is like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a different game now, I think. Of course, there will be changes to mate um, to some extent, and we will see what the next bunch of data grounds will offer or not, and if they will remove them from GLs eventually, which would be great, just make other teams better uh, instead of like, making the best teams even better and partially indestructible <laughs> um, so i think if they really like care about this game and the balance of this game they will make the make changes here um, and if don't if they don't do that then okay then then just forget about rankings then it's just pure rng yes, even more than with mods because with mods there yeah, you can balance it out right you can only mod like X amount of characters with X amount of mods. Um, and here you have like one data corner which is OP then you can prevent it from here. So enough rambling. Um, so uh, yeah, so what I wanted to actually wanted to say is like I try to get two in one for what a week most of the time. Um, and so it was one and one before this match. I felt like uh, I would be nice to win this so I don't have to start with like a negative uh wipe into the season um and also i wanted to climb up again because i was starting at place 20 then i was at 17 and fell down to 30 which was so weird uh, i mean of course it's a given that when you lose you fall but um, i want to climb up again just to keep a steady like positive progress and also to get near some other people that i didn't fight yet um and pot potentially would end up in the same bracket with uh, like fatal and i think it should be possible so maybe next week we um, there's a chance I would face him, which would be great. Um, yeah, and this was the match, so I won, um, and it was fun. Shout out to my opponent, uh, great game, great guy, and this time it was uh, turned out positive for me. Next time could be the other way around. So, um, yeah, that was also the first week of the new format with Data Grounds. Um, hope you enjoyed it. For me, it was like, ah, oh, okay. Some things were nice, some things were not so nice, but anyway, um, thanks for watching uh, and see you soon.